Do we have anyone on the meeting? Like the public? Yeah, it looks like a couple of people are uh, in okay. here. Um, yeah, start to trickle in. Okay, just because I can't see that, obviously. Let me know uh, when you want me to start. Do we have everybody, David? Um, yeah, I mean, you're, you're, we're good to, we're, okay. yeah, that's okay. our point. To, uh, I think we're good to start whenever. Okay. So, um, Alderman, if you want to open it up. All right. <clears throat> well, thank you everybody for joining this uh, community meeting that we're, we're having here regarding the Pulaski TIF uh, corridor. Um, I would like to thank the Department of Planning and Development for having this discussion and actually having this meeting, especially with me being uh, all of in the 31st, 31st Ward. And uh, <clears throat> the purpose of this meeting is to discuss the purpose and the amendment of the Pulaski Industrial TIF District and its future and financial resources for the community. TIF can at times be controversial, but it has been a good part in our community. TIF was used, for example, for nearly $2 million worth of improvements at Kaziasku Park, which is located in the 31st Ward, which would uh, be of uh, the new remap will be located in the 35th Ward to improve baseball fields, soccer courts, and upgrades to the field house. I'm hopeful that if, if this extension is eventually approved, that it could rely that I could also rely on the similar improvements in Kenwell Park. Beth McGuire from the Department of Planning and Development will give a short presentation. We'll take a discussion afterwards. Please use your Q&A questions and answers feature to ask the questions that you might have. DPT will be responding to any of all questions that come either during and after presentation. With that, I turn it over to Beth. Thank you, Alderman. Um, David, you need to enable screen sharing for me. Should be good now. Thank you. Can everyone see that? Yes. 
Okay. Uh, thank you for the introduction, Alderman Cardona. Uh, good evening, everyone. My name is Beth McGuire, and I'm a project manager for the Department of Planning and Development. As the Alderman said, we're here tonight to discuss the amendment to the Plasky Industrial Corridor Tax Increment Financing or TIF District. In addition to Alderman Cardona, I am also joined by my colleagues from the Department of Planning and Development, Tim Jeffries and Ryan Slattery, as well as the city's consultants from Johnson Research who performed the analysis, Ann Roney and Ralph Pinter. Here is the agenda for this evening. First, we will discuss why we're here, the purpose and the reason for this meeting and the use of TIF overall. After that, I'll explain how tax increment financing or TIF works, and then we will walk through the specifics of the Plasky Industrial Corridor TIF Amendment, including the revised boundary of the redevelopment project area, the goals and objectives of the plan, the proposed land use, the eligibility findings, and the updated plan budget. We will also note completed and potential development activity in the TIF. Once we finish running through the presentation, we will answer any questions you might have. The TIF as a whole runs northwest, roughly along the Milwaukee District's North Metro Line, bounded by Belmont Avenue on the north and Grand Avenue on the south, with Pulaski, Lowell, and Harding Avenues to the east and west. The entire TIF area measures 384 acres. Why are we here? Well, the main purpose for that is to extend the TIF district for an additional 12 year period to allow for further redevelopment of the project area. The overall goal of this is to ensure that the TIF district will be an ongoing financial resource for projects that will continue the positive momentum that has been happening on North Avenue as part of the department's larger Invest Southwest strategy. As part of this process, we will amend the termination date from December 31st, 2023 to December 31st, 2035, revise the budget, update the land use plan, and make minor changes to the plan language prior to receiving council approval. TIF, or tax increment financing, is a funding tool that helps generate financial resources to support public and private development projects within a specific geography. We've had TIF in Chicago since 1984 when the state of Illinois passed the TIF Act. The TIF Act allows municipalities in Illinois to designate TIF districts. The initial legislation has been amended many times, but it still provides the legal framework for the city to use TIF and allows the city to establish TIF districts in areas of the city that meet specific eligibility requirements. These areas need to demonstrate what the TIF Act calls lighting factors, which are defined in the Act. This chart gives a pretty good idea of how TIF works. The city is required to designate a specific area is within a TIF district. When that happens, the TIF will freeze the base taxes of the properties within the district at the time of adoption. Any growth of taxes following that designation are called incremental property taxes. Those funds are retained within the district rather than being collected by the taxing bodies for the duration of the TIF, usually 23 years. Once the TIF expires, the increased property tax value will resume as normal. As an example, if your property taxes are $100 per year, in, in that same year, your property is designated as within a TIF district. The following year, your property taxes may increase to $105. The $100 would go to the same place they always have, the city, the schools, and the park district. That $5, though, however, would go to the TIF district to be used for eligible improvements. The inclusion of a property within a district does not increase property taxes. The districts do not directly change. The districts do not directly change either the value of a property or the tax rate. Once a TIF is in place, there are limitations as to how TIF funds can and cannot be used. In brief, uses that are most allowed are public infrastructure and facilities, affordable housing, environmental remediation, and the rehabilitation of existing buildings. A common understanding of TIF is that it is predominantly used to finance private development projects. However, you might be surprised to find out that's not actually the case. In fact, over 80% of all TIF funds over the past decade plus have been spent on fully public uses, including street improvements, CTA facilities, schools, and parks. 
The remaining 20% of funds are used to leverage private investment, including commercial, industrial, and affordable housing projects. The Pulaski Industrial Corridor Added Area is comprised of 14 tax parcels, measures 1.65 acres, and is generally bounded by Wabansia Avenue on the north here, Pulaski Road Frontage on the east, this alley on the west, and the alley north of the Pioneer Bank building on the south. This area in orange on the map here contains the parcels which are being added into the TIF district. The primary purpose of adding these parcels to the district is to support the redevelopment of the Pioneer Bank building. Each TIF district has a list of goals and objectives. As, as we've noted before, the big picture goal is certainly the redevelopment of this general area, but more specifically, the goals include attract, attracting new industrial and business developments within the area, especially currently vacant sites, developing new affordable housing opportunities, improving infrastructure and parks, including access to green space along the 606 trail and a safer environment for pedestrians, pedestrians and cyclists, and creating new job opportunities within the redevelopment area. Once the goals and objectives have been decided upon, the next step is to create a land use plan that can serve as a framework for the redevelopment of the area. The redevelopment plan includes a general land use plan of future development within the TIF district. There is a proposed development project involving the Pioneer Bank building and the nearby parcels, which are the subject of this orange extension area. And it will call for a mix of uses, which will include both residential and commercial uses. The land use plan has been amended to reflect actual and proposed land uses in the entire area. In order to expand the boundaries of the TIF district, the state act requires that certain eligibility factors that legally demonstrate that the expansion area is vacant blighted or conservation area be present. The added area is comprised of both vacant and improved parcels, so both sets of criteria were used. For vacant blighted land like this, the city must establish that at least two eligibility factors are present in order to qualify for TIF designation. After a thorough review, it was determined that this vacant area exhibits two of those blighting factors. Environmental remediation will be required and deterioration of adjacent structures or site improvements. For improved land to be considered a conservation area, at least 50% of the buildings in the area must be 35 years old or greater, and at least three of 13 factors must be present. The improved area exhibits the age factor plus deterioration, obsolescence, and excessive vacancies. I will briefly explain some of these factors. Deterioration can generally be characterized by failure of building systems and building components, including poor masonry, broken and unsecured doors and windows, broken fencing, and other issues. Although the Pioneer Bank building is clearly a tremendous asset to the community that should be restored, it is also in poor condition and demonstrates signs of deterioration. Here's a picture of some of those issues more closely. Obsolescence refers to buildings that are no longer suited to modern conditions relative to their use. This can be seen in buildings whose ceiling height, mechanical structures, loading areas, and parking structures are no longer sufficient. All of these issues are present in this former industrial building, which is the only building in the added area. The TIF funds have been used successfully in many projects in the area. NQ Entra Square Phase 1 is an affordable housing development currently underway on Hamlin Avenue, and there is also senior housing at North Avenue Flasky, which was built several years ago. Ames Elementary and various streets have also received TIF funds for improvements. The Small Business Improvement Fund has been used to improve almost 40 properties on the commercial corridors of this TIF since 2007. We anticipate that future TIF funded projects in the area will include continued economic development in the area. Most immediately with the next phase of the NQ Entra Square project, as well as the redevelopment area of the Pioneer Bank building. That said, we also expect that further investments in the small business improvement fund, infrastructure, schools, and parks will continue. In order to make future projects reality, the redevelopment plan has updated the budget to include the increment that we generated during the additional 12 years of the TIF. The expected increment to be generated and expended 
was $161 million. The original budget was $69 million, so this is an increase of $67 million. As you can see, it's expected that the majority of funds for this TIF are in the affordable housing construction, property assembly, and public infrastructure line items. A note on the budget, the line item dollar figures for each category are for planning purposes. Money can be spent on any individual line item. The only figure that can't change without city council approval is the total redevelopment project cost line item. This slide shows the next steps in the process. Following this public meeting will be our Community Development Commission introduction in August, and then our presentation to the Joint Review Board in September. The next opportunities for public comment are anticipated to be the Community Development Commission public hearing in October and Finance Committee in December. If there are no changes, this amendment could be approved at the December City Council meeting. With that, I want to thank all of you for your time this evening. And I'm happy to answer questions. We'll ask that you please use the Q&A function to type in any questions you may have. Brian Slattery will then read out your questions for this group to address. Again, thank you for your time. I was about to say a few lines one down. Oh, there's a question. Here we go. So first question we have is, is there a plan to decrease industrial zoning in this project? Uh, I can take that. Um, I, I don't think there's any plans in this project to specifically um, reduce the amount of industrial zoning in this area, but I think that this um, plan could allow for the conversion if that happens in the future. But this this doesn't specifically say, oh, you know, this zoning must must go to a different kind of use. If there's um, industrial uses that continue, that that's that's a you know, that's good. If 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 the area moves on past uh, the it's you know sort of industrial heritage, and then that's that's fine too. And I think we've seen that with some sites in the area, and I think that we'll see some industrial spaces continue in the future too. So there's nothing specific that requires it one way or the other, though. Okay. The uh, next question we have: How does a building owner apply for TIF funds? What is the approval process and timing? Um, I can find the the uh, the link for the application and put it in the chat um, so everyone can see it. But we have a. Uh, we have an application uh, that is inclusive of a number of our different incentives that we have with the city, not just uh, TIF, but also the Neighborhood Opportunity Fund program. And right now, currently, the, the Chicago Recovery Plan grant funds. Um, and uh, we everything starts with an application and understanding what your project is. And it goes through the, the various you know internal review and legislative process from there. I would say overall, it, it probably takes, um, you know, things are moving pretty quickly, um, around eight months, but typically closer to 10 months, maybe even a year sometimes. Um, it really just depends on the, the how complex the project is, how large the request is, and, and, and those factors. But um, I will find the, the, the application right now for you. And I also, to say that um, for the small business improvement funds, that's a shorter time frame sure. for it. Um, it's a uh, it's a bit of easier project as well. I think Beth mentioned there's been news uh, quite a bit within this area, so yeah, like for something quicker. So go ahead, Beth. Yeah, there there have been over forty projects completed, and I think there's about another fifteen in process for the small business. So that's a great option too. Uh, yeah, and I think for everyone on the call, the the it's about a quarter of a million dollars is the break that the city seems to has between what we call small projects and big projects, and you know, quarter of a million or less is obviously small. Um, and we've we've done we've done our best to try to come up with a sort of expedited or or more, you know, uh, fast moving process for the for those small grants. Um, with the large grants, sometimes we're talking about tens of millions of dollars, and and, and that does require some 
some significant due diligence. Okay. Next question. Uh, my property tax has increased by $12,000. I am repurposing my property on my own and paying for everything on my own and quickly running out of funds. Texas have already increased in the past year. I'm not collecting any income. Are you saying my property taxes are going to increase even more now, even more? So as a, yeah, go ahead. Uh, as a result of the, uh, the property being placed in the tips district, um, that does not automatically increase your property taxes. And unless you happen to own property in that expansion area, the little orange area that I showed, uh, your property has been in a tip since I believe it's 1999. So that this won't have an impact on your property taxes or your value. Uh, the next question, uh, will the real estate taxes of mixed slaves used um, property in the proposed area increase? Uh, I, I think it's Beth said, you know, it, yeah. not as a result of the, the TIF. Um, taxes do fluctuate up, they fluctuate down, and, but, but the TIF doesn't have any bearing on, on, on that. Um, I think we could just give it a few more minutes to make sure that no one else has any um, additional questions about this. Um, uh, and yeah, I guess for, for people that might be seeing this on, on the department's YouTube page, um, you're always uh, able to reach out to us about questions on this at uh, FID uh, underscore intake at cityofchicago.org. Uh, I'll say that again. It's F I D underscore intake at cityofchicago.org. Um, and if we don't have any other questions in another minute or so, I think we'll um, wrap up and, and get, give the alderman the last word. Okay. Yeah, another one coming. Uh, will the old bowling alley also be repurposed? So uh, developments of indi individual buildings, um, I'm not sure exactly where that bowling alley is, but it's always possible that that owner could, it, it, I'm not, is it, if it's something that's not currently operational, if it's vacant, sure, somebody can buy it and reopen it. Perhaps they would apply for you know, some spit funds or something, but that's not something that we're aware of currently. Um, well, I don't, I don't see any more questions. Um, Alderman Cardona, if you'd, if you'd like to say any closing remarks, I think, um, you know, that's, that's, that's probably it from us tonight, but, um, as always, you can, as I said, you can get a hold of us at FID underscore intake at cityofchicago.org. Um, if you've got questions about this at any point during the process and, uh, and Beth mentioned there's going to be opportunities for, um, for public input down the road, both at the Community Development Commission and, and City Council again. Sorry, there's uh, uh, one more question, sorry. Uh, will redevelopment begin in 2023? 20, um, uh, if that's about the Pioneer Bank building, then I think yes, uh, that is certainly the goal for, for redevelopment to start on that project in 23.
All right, Tim. Well, I would like to thank everybody here on the call or who attended a Zoom tonight from our community our stakeholders, especially the Department of Planning and Development, because um, this is no easy task. And I know that um, you know we're here to help and improve our community and improve our, our infrastructure as well. But thank you so much for taking the time tonight to be here so we can have this uh, community meeting and, um, and many more. Thank you very much, everybody. Thank you, thank everyone. Bye-bye. Thank you.